I'm using Query as a, as a user and trying to improve our products uh, to, on behalf of uh, the data community that we hope will find our products useful. Cool. So um, I'm not sure how much uh, our folks have had a chance to get to know Query before today, but um, this is kind of the conceptual model that Excellent, I muted myself. Here's the conceptual model for uh, how we explain what we do. Query is um, a range of things, but essentially it's version control for data. Um, and a lot of what we do operates on a peer-to-peer -peer network. Some of this uh, we can talk about today, but a lot of I think what we're gonna focus on is how to use version control on your data. So the, the red blob and the blue blob, mostly. Uh, Query is free and open source. Um, as a business model, we'll we sell add-on services via Query Cloud and Enterprise Solutions, but uh, it's uh, Query Cloud is free and uh, our code is licensed under the GPL. Um, Chris is gonna use a range of terms today, so here's sort of a way of kind of getting you oriented. Um, we, uh, actually Chris is probably the best one to go through some of uh, this data set model. Do you mind taking the slide, Chris? Sure, I mean, I think uh, data set means different things to everybody. Um, when you think of a data set, you might be thinking of a CSV file, um, but it's important to remember that, you know, data set generally in the wild uh, doesn't have metadata associated with it, or maybe it does, but that metadata lives somewhere else. Um, so the big takeaway from this slide is that queries put together uh, a, an actual data model for how the data is stored that combines uh, the, not only the data itself, which we call the body, um, or you could think of that as a table, um, with with all of the things that you need to make that body useful, um, the probably simplest to understand are the README and the um, and the metadata. So we actually have meta that's a, a kind of structured data object uh, where you can have a title and category, and we have a README where you can just have freeform text, uh, just like you would with a GitHub repository, um, all to provide more context. So most of the time, those things live separately from the data, maybe on an open data portal or on a website. Uh, in Query, they're actually baked into the data model themselves and they live alongside the data, uh, which is powerful and useful. Perfect, thanks. Um, so the big mission that we're on at Query is to introduce the concept of version control to data sets. Uh, so what we're gonna kind of show you today is um, a number of different steps you can take to ingest and publish data, but um, the changes that you make over time, uh, mm -hmm. finding a way to account for those and um, you know, when you share your data with somebody else, these are the ways that you can know uh, how data has evolved over time, decide exactly which version you want to, uh, to work with. Um, we just released a new version of our desktop app, 050. Um, and if you guys are interested in uh, playing with it after the webinar or even during, you can always find the latest version at query.io slash download. Um, this is a little bit of an agenda for today. Chris is gonna show us how to import a data set. Um, so basically introducing a data set to query in the query community, uh, adding metadata and readme information to kind of enhance it and then uh, make a version, you know, make an update that creates a new version uh, and then publishing that. So sharing that revised data set with the world. And then, you know, sort of the other side of the handshake, finding a data set that someone else had published on query.cloud and pulling it in with Query Desktop so you can then use it yourself as kind of the secondary flow. And then third, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Query from the command line, different integrations that we've supported and will support, um, including um, how to work with Query um, in your Python library, wherever, whatever tool you're using it with. Um, any questions before we get started? Uh, as I said at the top, um, please feel free to drop your questions inside of the Q&A and I can um, kind of stack those up for Chris, but otherwise I think, uh, Chris, I will promote you to host, I think, unless you can share your screen. Uh, I don't think I can yet. Okay. Oh, wait, I can. I think you need to, oh, maybe I can only, let's try it, desktop one. There you go. Okay, can I start video? It says I can't start video until the host, because the host has stopped it. What does that mean? All right, I'm gonna make you a host. Okay. All right, let's see if that works. All right. Can you see me? Yep. Not that it's terribly important. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna get started with, uh, uh, as, as uh, Rico mentioned, uh, the workflow for importing data 
uh, into Query. So um, for this demo, um, I've set up a Query Desktop. So that's what you see in this, uh, in this window right here is Query Desktop. Um, so this is a desktop app that you can download. Um, and when you first open it, you'll be looking at a collection view and you'll probably have no data sets. Um, but in this view, this is kind of the main, um, the main collection of query, uh, sometimes called a query collection, sometimes called a query repo. Um, but the repo contains data sets that are uh, made by me and some that are made by others that I've pulled down. Um, so you can just to familiarize you with what query data sets uh, look like at this high level when you're looking at them in a catalog. Um, they all have what we call a, a data set reference, which kind of looks like a GitHub um, repo reference, but it's basically a username slash a data set name that is URL slash computer friendly. So you can see um, my account here is called Chris Wong dash demo. Um, and you can see that there's a few, uh, a few data sets in here that are actually mine. Uh, and then I have, uh, I think seven more that I've pulled down from the network. Um, so these data sets all live inside my query repository. And what I'm going to show you is how we can actually make a new data set uh, from a CSV file uh, and start tracking its version history. Um, so uh, I, I found this uh, for this demo today, this uh, website um, that has some CSVs we can download of birthdays and heights and greatness ratings, whatever that means for US presidents. Um, this is actually a good illustration of the concept of what's you know, bad about data in the wild right now. Um, these are CSV files that somebody crafted, put together, assembled. Maybe they made them in Excel. Maybe they were an export from a database. We don't really know where they came from. Um, I want to call your attention to this last revised. Um, so this, you know, they're obviously they're publishing data by download link, uh, which is normal and a lot of people do. Uh, they've actually gone to the extra mile of adding a, a last revised date on here, but we really have no idea what these looked like prior to April 25th. Uh, so what happened, you know, what was the revision? Was it just changing the website? Did they actually change the data? Uh, we don't really know. Um, but to start with, I'm just going to download this presidentbirthdays.csv. Uh, I'm going to move it to my desktop right here, which you can kind of see peeking through at the bottom there. And um, we can take a quick look at what's inside of it. I'll just open it up really fast so we can see what kind of columns it has. Um, so this will just load it into uh, Apple numbers, but you could open it with Excel if you want to. Um, so we can see, I already see a little formatting error, but I'm gonna leave it alone and pretend uh, I didn't notice that. Um, you can see we've got uh, name, day, month, and year uh, in an index column. So pretty normal, pretty small, simple data set, uh, CSV. So um, what I can do here, is take this CSV and just drag it right into Query Desktop. And as soon as I drop this thing in, a few things are going to happen. Um, basically, behind the scenes, it's going to parse the CSV. It's going to make a commit on my behalf. Uh, and a commit in Query is just the same as uh, you would expect, like a commit in, uh, in, in, uh, when using GitHub for version control, and it'll save a version. Um, so uh, it's also inferring column types. So it's reading the, reading the data in the CSV and saying, this must be a string, this must be a number, et cetera. Um, and it'll also create the structured part of the data set, which we mentioned in that slide earlier. So without further ado, I'll drop it in. Um, and actually, not when I drop, I actually have to make the data set name first, of course. Um, so I can call this uh, birthdays of US presidents. Um, so what I'm doing here is typing a human-friendly title that's actually going to become part of the, the metadata. Um, but you can see that it's converting my human readable title, title into this uh, computer readable data set reference. So this will actually be the canonical name for this data set uh, once it's brought into the query network. So uh, I'll hit create, and here we go. So uh, you can see uh, we're no longer in the collection view in Query Desktop. Uh, we're in what we call the data set pane or the uh, data set panel. Um, so you can see the data set references is listed up here. Chris Wong dash demo is the identity or user that this uh, data set is created under. Uh, and then birthdays underscore of underscore US presidents is the name. Um, looking at this pane, you see that we have uh, one commit from a few seconds ago. So like I mentioned, um, it's, you know, read the file. Uh, we're no longer looking at this file. We're looking at the data that are actually stored in query. Um, so where is that data? It's like putting the data into a database. It's actually a, a service running on your machine. Uh, under the hood, it's actually storing data in something called the interplanetary file system, uh, which you don't really need to concern yourself terribly with, but it's what makes um, all these data sets easily portable in this new format that they're in. 
Um, over here, we can actually see with these red dots, or sorry, with these green dots, um, what happened during this commit. So like I said, the, the commit happened right when I hit uh, enter on that modal. Um, and we can see that there, uh, the, the green dot means that these components of the data set were created. All right, so this is the first time uh, this data set has ever had a body. And like I said, the body is the table itself. Um, we've also got a, a structure. And if I click on structure, um, the kinds of information that are in structure include schema. Uh, so we can see that it thinks that the index column is an integer column, which is correct. Uh, the name column is a string column and so on. Um, there's no descriptions for these columns because we haven't entered them yet. Uh, and meta, meta component um, has only the title because that's the only bit that I've put in. Um, so at this point, we've got one version of this data set. If we scroll down here in the, in the body preview, uh, there's that glitch. Um, so whoever made this, uh, you know, obviously for, you know, uh, used a, a period instead of a comma when they should have uh, been separating 11 and 1795 into different um, categories uh, or different columns. So, uh, you know, we've committed dirty data. Uh, this is not useful to anyone if I were to share it right now. So our next step should be to clean it and then commit a new version with the, clean, with the cleaned up information. Um, so I'm actually gonna open this CSV. Um, so again, I'm, I'm editing the source. I'm not really messing with query at this point. I'm just editing a file and I'm gonna use that file to update the data set. Uh, so let's see if we can get this data set to open in a text editor. And can I find my rogue period instead of comma, which is right here next to James Polk. Um, so I'm gonna clean that up. Uh, one other thing I'm gonna clean up is just this trailing, this leading space, which we don't really need. Um, so I'm actually gonna make sure that all of my CSV values don't have a space after the commas. Um, this will just take a second, but it's just a, a cleanliness thing um, because the way the, the CSV parser works in query, it's actually, um, it actually thinks the second column is uh, not a string, or sorry, uh, yeah, I think the second column is um, is a string, but because it starts with a space, uh, the quotation mark it thinks is an internal quotation mark. So this should be good now. Um, so I'm gonna hit save on that. So all I did here again was open this CSV file in a text editor. So I just saved it kind of back in place right now. Um, so I've shown you already is just kind of exploring uh, the, the read-only uh, look into a version that already exists. But if we click on working data set, we now are in uh, editing mode, um, essentially. Um, so we don't have the ability at this point yet to actually make live edits here in the table, which we will at some point in the future. But I can actually drag in a new CSV and it'll overwrite the, the data set body. Um, so I'm gonna do that right now. And uh, basically what's staged right now is uh, this little orange dot that says, if you were to commit right now, you would be committing a change to the body. Um, and I'm gonna click the commit tab. And just like you would with uh, GitHub desktop, um, we actually have to type a message this time. And uh, this is like, a, uh, this will get stored along with the commit and anyone who comes along in the future and wants to know what happened at this point in time, uh, this is a sort of message for them. So I'm gonna say uh, cleaned up, uh, errant uh, period that should have been a comma. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm leaving a future note. Uh, there's a message field where you can leave a more detailed note, but the title is usually all you would need. And then last but not least, I'll hit the commit button. And now if you look this at this sort of railroad track of commits we've got over here, uh, there's now the first one from five minutes ago, which you remember when we imported the data, and then a nice message for this one from a few seconds ago. And uh, I can actually click between these two and actually explore the data set at these different versions or the different points in history. Um, if I click on cleaned up errant period, um, I can actually see the commit message. I can see a commit hash. Uh, I can see how large the data set is um, between the two. And I can see actually that uh, the, the size changed a little bit from 1.5 kilobytes over here to 1.6 kilobytes because I cleaned up a little bit of white space. Um, but you get the idea of, of how we're crafting this data set. Uh, so what I can do is make a couple more commits or maybe just one more, we'll see what happens. So I'm back on the working data set again. I have no, no stage changes. Um, so I'm kind of uh, clean at the last version. Um, but right here in Query Desktop, I can do a couple of things uh, to uh, improve this data set. So I click on the meta tab. Uh, remember we have a title defined, but we don't have any other meta. Um, so uh, I wanna be you know, a good data steward and tell people where this data set came from. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go copy the URL of the, uh, 
of the website that I originally copied this data from. And I will go back to Query Desktop and let's give it a description. So we'll just say a uh, data set of US president birth dates originally downloaded from this URL. Um, I can add a theme, which is supposed to be like category. So I could just say uh, US politics, for example. Um, I can add keywords and just say uh, presidents, American presidents. Uh, these keywords, uh, you can kind of put in whatever you want. Um, they don't really, uh, they, they will get used for searching if you do publish this data set. Um, and then there are other ways you can like categorize your data sets so that they all show up under the same keywords and things like that. Um, so this is, this is our kind of curated metadata. Um, so we have uh, themes, keywords, licenses, uh, contributors, citations, um, access URL. Um, I think I can put home URL as the same URL that I uh, downloaded it from. Um, so this is all based on DCAT, which is a standard for, um, for data catalogs. Uh, and then you can also add custom metadata, uh, which you can't do during via the uh, this UI, but you can in other other uh, using the command line interface. Um, so you can see I have an orange dot here, which means there's unsaved changes uh, to the meta. Um, and before I commit this, I can actually change two components of the data set in one uh, one commit. So I'm going to add a README. Um, so this is a README, uh, much like you would do on a GitHub repository, and you can see. As soon as I started typing this, uh, this little dot turned green, which means uh, if we were to commit this now, the readme will be new during this commit. The meta, of course, already exists, so it will be changed. Um, so I can use markdown here um, to, to have a nicely formatted uh, commit or uh, readme. So let's call this uh, US President Birthdays. Uh, and then same thing, I'm just gonna, this is more to familiarize the user, uh, potential users with this data set. So uh, this is a demonstration data set uh, pulled from, uh, let's put in the URL and then let's make it an actual hyperlink in Markdown um, and paste that in. Used during a query webinar. Uh, during October 2020. Okay, so I'm giving context here and anyone who comes along will know why this data set exists and why it's useful or maybe not useful because it's just for demo purposes. Um, but just like I did with the previous commit, I can hit the commit button here. Uh, I want to leave it a, a good description of what this commit contains. So I will say added a readme, uh, filled in some meta items. Uh, and let's hit commit. And just like we did before, uh, now we have three commits on this data set. So uh, you get the idea of how we're, how we're progressing here. Um, I could add new columns to this data set. I could add, you know, I could improve it and say, we're throwing out the month, day, year columns, and we're going to add a, a standard ISO uh, 8601 uh, timestamp or date stamp. Um, we don't need the index column. Um, other things that, you know, users may want down the road or I may want down the road. Uh, to make my data set better, but every time we make a change, um, all those changes are um, immutable and, and are archived in this sort of history thread, uh, just like you would with a, with a normal version control system. Um, so uh, what can we do now? Um, so I've got three commits. I've cleaned up this data set. I've added context to it. Uh, this is ready to share. Um, so we have a nice little publish button up here uh, that says, says publish this data set to Query Cloud. Um, so Query Cloud is like the, the GitHub to, to, uh, to query as Git, uh, if, you, if that's the analogy we want to make here. Um, so with a single click, I can basically take this entire data set, and not just the latest version, but all three versions that exist, uh, push them all up to Query Cloud, and it will um, not only host the data for me um, and all the other information that I've added here, but it'll um, make it discoverable and uh, give it kind of a home on the web. So I'm going to hit this button. It's going to tell me, uh, make sure you're pushing open data. So right now, um, anything you push to cloud is going to be publicly available. So uh, if, you want to if you want to try it out, make sure you're, you're publishing data that you're allowed to publish and uh, you don't mind it being open for the world to see. Um, but let's hit publish. 
So we'll wait for the spinner to go. Should see it run pretty quickly. Data set is published. Uh, and now I have a viewing cloud link. So let's click on that. Here's my web browser. And automatically, um, birthdays of US presidents is now a thing on Query Cloud. Uh, you can see it's under my namespace in the URL here, uh, which essentially this part of the URL is the, is the data set reference. Um, I've got a little preview of this simple readme, but I could have put pictures in here if I wanted to or added some more links. Um, the meta and structure are probably less important to people uh, that are stumbling across this data set, but if you want to see them, you can open the meta and see the keywords that I added and see the theme that I added. Um, the structure is also in here, so you can get some information about the format that it's in, the body, that, uh, the body size. Um, you see this, th there's an errors column here. Um, and uh, this is actually behind the scenes queries validation feature, which I didn't really talk about, um, but you can set rules for a column and uh, query will still let the data in if it has errors, but it'll let you know about them. So for example, uh, if the schema says that this column must be numeric and it has a, a non-numeric value in it, uh, you can still make that commit, uh, but it'll show up as an error. Um, and then last but not least is the body preview. So what can we do from Query Cloud? Uh, a few different things. Um, one, we have issues. So uh, any of you right now uh, could stumble upon this and say, I don't understand why you use these three columns. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you concatenate them into a, a proper date stamp? Uh, and you can just make a new issue that says that. Um, so this is similar to the issue queues that you might find in a GitHub repository, but this is a place to have open discussion uh, about a data set, hopefully to improve it or to find errors in it and, uh, and you know, make it better over time. Uh, we also have a history tab. So uh, it's not just, this is not just you know, your normal open data portal experience. Uh, you can actually click on the history of every single query data set and um, see very plainly, uh, you know, what the commit hashes are, what the messages were, when, the, when these commits happened. Um, so if you came, you know, came and stumbled upon this, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that it has three commits versus one that might have 100 commits and they all happened, you know, as part of these cleanup steps, um, you immediately have a little bit more context and understanding of, of the existence of this data set. Uh, and hopefully I've left enough information in the readme uh, to, to point you back to the original source, um, which is this link, of course. Uh, and then you can, you can continue working with that. Um, we also have the ability to do downloads. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, there, there's a couple ways to get this data set off of Query Cloud, which we're gonna actually demo next. Um, and uh, one of them is pulling and the other one is downloading. So downloading is what you expect, um, but essentially what you need to know about query is that as soon as you download this data or export it from query, uh, you're kind of back in CSV world where it doesn't really have all the same uh, benefits of being in the version control system. Uh, of course, there's still a need to get data out, but we have the download link here so that you can just quickly get a, um, you know, quickly get a zip file that's got all of the information for the latest version. Um, you can also pull it. Um, so pulling it, uh, you can actually do in desktop, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, or you can also do with our CLI. So just like you would do a, a pull of a GitHub repository or a clone of a GitHub repository, you can just pull this data set down to your computer. Um, we also have integrations, uh, which are kind of nascent at this moment, but for example, we have an API on Query Cloud that will actually just pull out the body as a CSV download link. Um, so I can actually take this uh, download link and throw it into anything that uses a CSV. Um, so Kepler GL comes to mind, uh, Data Wrapper comes to mind. Um, but these are all third-party tools that can import, a data directly, import data directly from a URL. So um, now, you know, once you put, publish your data on Query Cloud, uh, it's now essentially hosted as a CSV. Um, and what's cool about that is that every time you push a new version, uh, it'll always get the latest, which is kind of neat. Um, so I'll take a, I'll, I'll stop, I'll pause for a second. Um, so we basically, you know, we went through the, the process of importing a new data set to Query Desktop from a CSV. We improved it and managed it a little bit with, with Query Desktop, and then we published it to Query Cloud, and now it's public. Um, Perfect. Is that, yeah, are there any, any questions that have come up in the chat or any? any uh, yeah, anything? yeah, actually a good one. Um, I'm not sure if we had decided to put this on the agenda, um, so I don't know if you're ready to demo it today, but we've demoed this a few times on different uh, using Query and, and building Query calls. But one question was, uh, quote, do you have a process to merge two or more different data sets? Um, yeah, so the answer, the answer to that is um, 
is uh, no. So we've the, the way we've chosen to do version control. Um, basically, the way query was designed, it's kind of sort of the last commit wins. Um, so it's not uh, the, the the concept of a merge or concept of branching uh, doesn't actually appear in this version control system. Um, so we do have uh, we do have the ability to to diff um, and give you reports of what changed between uh, two different versions of a data set, um, but merging uh, in the in the traditional sense that you would think of with code uh, isn't really a thing. Uh, any other questions I can answer? Um, or anything else you'd think I ought to cover, Rico, in that um, flow? Yeah, one question that um, I think you're going to get into, but the question is, do you have a CLI interface instead of a desktop app? So that uh, is a great transition into that. Yes, for sure. So we're going to show that. Uh, I'll show that after. Right now, I'm going to show uh, pulling. Um, actually, I can show that in the CLI as well, but we'll do CLI in just a moment. Um, so let's jump over to uh, a query cloud. Sorry, this is query cloud. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is just how to pull data. Um, so this is the sort of inverse workflow where I, I have query desktop already installed on my computer, but I can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a frequent visitor to query cloud because people are always uploading new and interesting stuff here. Uh, and I want to be able to pull it down uh, to my computer without without downloading because then I lose all the, the metadata and goodies. I, I want the full experience of query. Um, so the example I'll use is uh, my turnstile data, um, which uh, I publish once a week uh, by aggregating the uh, New York City MTA's turnstile counts data set, which is this guy right here. Um, so this has become a pretty popular data set. You can see there's actually 10 people following it. They get notifications every time it updates. Uh, there's 233 downloads that uh, downloads or pulls that have happened uh, since we started counting, which was maybe a month ago or something. Um, so lots of information here about you know where this data set came from, but I say okay, I'm interested. Let's let's pull it. Um, so in here we have two options for pulling. One just copies the data set reference. Um, so if you have a data set reference, you can pull it uh, from anywhere um, with any, you know, if, if you have query, uh, either desktop or CLI. And then if you have the CLI, uh, the command is actually query pull and then the data set reference. So pretty simple. Uh, I'm just going to do this in desktop for now. So I'm going to copy this, uh, this pull uh, data set reference. And let's go back to query desktop. So uh, all I need to do is click the pull data set button up here and it's going to say, okay, what data set do you want to pull? Um, so B5 World Bank population is the one that's like written in here as a as a hint. Um, that's kind of our Hello World data set. Uh, it's just a you know population figures for every country from the World Bank. Uh, so you should take a look at that one if you're interested in it. Um, so I'm just going to paste in the turnstile data and hit pull. And this isn't terribly big. I think it's a few megabytes. So. Um, it all comes down and here's our history. So we have a very long version history here because I've been maintaining this data set uh, since April-ish. Yeah, so going back to April. Um, some of these are grayed out, which means I don't actually have the versions here, but I do have the record that that version existed uh, and that version may, may either not, not have been stored on Query Cloud, um, but the, the record of it was stored, so, or I guess the timeline was stored. Um, but I do have a few a few versions here, so I can click on the one. Whoops, let's let's reload on that one, and let's try and get back in there. Okay, so I can click on older versions and check them out. But uh, you know, how is this actually useful to you? So you have the full context, and you can explore the the history and actually see what was changed in each one. So this last one, uh, this last commit, which is from earlier this week, has. Uh, changes to the readme, the meta, and the body. Um, and if I click, uh, well, here, what, what, I, what I would want to do then is export this data. Um, so I can export a CSV of the body, or I can export a full zip. Um, but basically, I can take this CSV export and then bring it into Jupyter and do an analysis, or bring it into RStudio, um, or bring it into uh, my data visualization so of software suite. Um, so you know, think of query as kind of the place where you manage the you know, manage your collection of data sets uh, that you get from the wild and then you export them. Um, so I'll export this to my desktop, for example. Um, export them to bring them into other, uh, other software that you need to use the data in. Um, and then of course, if that software, or if, you know, if, I, if I were bringing this into a Jupyter Notebook and doing some data analysis, I might end up with another data set, uh, you know, another data frame inside of my Jupyter Notebook 
um, that I could just bring right back into query and say, you know, I started with this raw data that's on query, but here's my results of my analysis that is a smaller, you know, more, more specific or more contextual data set about a, a theme. Um, and I'll just put that right back in query and publish it so that uh, the world can benefit from that. And maybe it's an input to somebody else's pipeline. Um, so that's the data set pull flow. Um, and then what I'll do next is give a quick glance at uh, query command line. So uh, if I open up a terminal, um, I can do similar things that you might think of to do with like Git, for example, I can say uh, query list. And this is basically the same as my collection view in query desktop. It's going to show me all the data sets that I have, what the hashes are for their previous versions uh, or for their last versions. So I can paginate that a little bit and get familiar with it. Um, if I were to say query use uh, NYC transit data turnstile daily counts 2020, um, now all of my commands will be uh, based on this as the kind of selected or active data set. Uh, so I can just say query log, for example, and it's going to give me a list of commits. So this is actually for one data set and it's going to show me, uh, you know, Monday, night, Monday, October 19th, uh, it was changed, October 14th, it was changed, um, and I can paginate through this list. Um, so this is actually all the same, same information that's powering uh, this list in uh, this list of commits in query desktop for each data set, um, but you can get at it programmatically. Um, Another example of what I can do, so actually here, let's do, let's do query list again. I wanna switch back to the data set that we just created for this demo, which was called President Birthdays of US Presidents. So we're gonna use that. So let's say query use. Um, so what I can do now is pull out individual parts of this data set. Um, so I can say query get body, uh, Chris Wong Birthdays of US Presidents and it'll just put out the body into the uh, standard output. So I could pipe that into a file uh, or pipe that into anything else that wants a CSV input piped into it. Um, I can say query get um, meta and then the data set name. Actually, I think I don't need the data set name because I, I did query use, but I'll leave it in there. Um, so here's the, here's the meta, which is actually formatted as YAML. Um, I could say format equals JSON. Uh, and I'll get it as JSON. And for this demo, what I'll do here is I'll actually pipe this, pipe this, uh, or not pipe it, but uh, save this to a file. So we're gonna call this meta.json. Um, and then I'll just open that in a text editor. So I just, uh, I saved the meta.json. I, I did query get to export the, the meta from whatever the last version is of this data set. And you can see, uh, these are all the things that we just entered in Query Desktop, but now I have control of them a little more directly. Um, so if I were, for example, to add another keyword in here, I can just start editing the JSON and just say uh, politics. Um, I can say query demo, and I can say uh, Rico is awesome. And um, let's just save that, make sure it's valid JSON. I'm just making sure I didn't leave any commas or out or my double quotes are looking good. Um, so now I have a file and remember I just saved the file on the file system. I didn't actually change the query data set at all. Um, so uh, what I can do now is say query save. Um, if I give it the file flag and then I say meta.json. Uh, this is effectively the same as if I were to edit this JSON via query desktop, um, but I'm just saying, hey, make a new commit. Like, Query save is going to make a new commit on this data set. Uh, I say use the file meta.json as the inputs to this commit. Um, I believe I can say, actually here, before we do the data set reference, let's say uh, dash dash title, uh, which will be add keywords. So this is my commit message. Uh, and then let's put the data set reference. So this command will get us a new version. And there it goes, it says data set saved. There's still 14 validation errors, which I'll work on at some point in the future. Uh, if I do query list, sorry, query log right now, I should see the, the latest commit, which is October 29th at 1438 hours uh, EDT, which is just now. Um, and it tells me what happened here, which is uh, added keywords one, two, and three. 
Uh, and here's my message that said add keywords. So um, that's, that's the CLI. Uh, and just to prove to you that there, the CLI is, is talking to my query, query uh, collection the same way that desktop is. Um, if I go back to my collection here and I click on, uh, what's it called? Birthdays, US birthdays of US presidents. Um, and I click on that. Uh, now we've got four commits, right? So uh, the version, um, I have a version here that is actually not on Query Cloud. Uh, and it's going to allow me to publish again uh, because now I've got more. I've got more information here than is on Query Cloud. So the the, the data set as published on Query Cloud is now stale, um, and you know I need to make sure that the the world gets this new version of the data set that I just updated. So I'm going to hit publish, and there it goes. And uh, if we go over to Query Cloud now, we should see all four versions. So. Uh, let's clear. Yeah. Oh, we're still on the subway term styles. Actually, let's go on the, the if we go to the home page of Query Cloud, this data set should be near the top because it was recently published. Uh, oh, look, it's got an issue. Somebody made an issue. It'll be a familiar face. What's the issue? Update for 46th president. Oh, timely, timely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I'll, I'll get back to you in a few weeks on that one. Um, so yeah, US president birthdays. And if we click on history, we should see our four commits and there they are. So um, yeah, so the, the CLI is, you know, makes it makes things a little more powerful and you can integrate into third party tools. Um, I've used it, you know, I have a node wrapper that I've built on top of it so that I can use node scripts and uh, process data in JavaScript. And then once I save it to a file, I can just call the CLI to commit it. Um, you know, you can uh, use the CLI, uh, actually our Python library is built on top of it as well. So as long as you have uh, a data set, uh, as long as you have query locally, um, it's very easy to like open up uh, Python or Jupyter and um, just with a single line of code, you can say pull down this data set and import it into a data frame in pandas, um, things like that. So um, I won't be demoing that. This was much more about just sort of the, the mechanics of doing uh, version control and, and updating the different components of a query data set uh, with desktop, um, which I think we've covered. So um, I think that's, that'll end it for the demo part. Uh, I would love to answer any more questions if people have them. Can you show cool. a diff, he says. Oh, okay. You saw that. Okay, cool. Yeah, there are two questions. One came through the chat and I asked uh, Anant maybe to clarify just so I make sure that we're getting to their question. Um, so one is, can you show how to do the diff? Um, and so Barack, this is a diff from the command line that Chris is showing you. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a version of this on the desktop app, which we, um, deprecated in this latest release because we don't love the way, um, it summarizes the diff. So this is kind of an area of active research for us. We're trying to understand a lot of use cases about how folks would use the diff, uh, how you want, you know, what, we can tell you a lot about what's changed from one version of a data set to the next and we want to make sure that um, we're telling you what you want to see. So uh, we're, we'd love to hear more about what your specific use cases are. Um, you know, you can either tell us here or, uh, you know, I'll be following up with a lot of different ways to get feedback to us. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop live demoing diff because it's not working in the CLI <laughs> right now. Um, so it, I, it, it's uh, I think I will, I'll just say that where we're going, so diff has existed in CLI for over, for several years, um, but it's just a very, just gives you this kind of dump of what changed on different lines. Um, I think we're, we're now leaning much harder towards uh, the notion of like a change report versus an actual diff uh, or a diff that's more similar to what you would find in code. Um, and it's, it's much more about, uh, you know, giving high level metrics about you know, this column now has 27 more uh, different values than it had in the prior version. Um, obviously, you'd still be able to drill down and figure out where those actually happen, but uh, it's much more about comparing like the overall um, stats for a column or across the data set version with, with the previous version. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do a webinar on that in a few more weeks here, um, but it's not quite ready to show yet. Okay, cool. And it looks like a non followed up um, clarifying their question. Um, so the original question was, uh, can you be more specific about relationship? Oh, sorry, that was mine. <laughs> um, do you have a way to define relationships between data sets? Uh, and by that, I mean supporting relationships like one-to-one -one or one-to-many. So I 
Uh, no, I, I, so you can think of every query data set as, as a single table at this point. Um, they do actually also support JSON, but that's uh, like tab tabular data or what would be in a CSV is kind of a first class citizen in query at this point. Um, so linking them together, uh, no, that, that's come up quite a bit uh, where, you know, what you might think of as one data set actually has four or five different tables that all need to live together. So we've, we've come up with a few different ideas for how that would be supported, but they're just not really baked yet. Um, so no, I think the, you know, for like a one-to-many relationship, uh, that's the kind of thing that you could document well in a readme or something, but it's not really, there's no mechanics to say, by the way, this column is a lookup for this other column in another table. Um, but we'd love to, you know, we'd love to hear how that might work. Um, Cause I think it's, it just boils down to like some other meta, meta thing on top of it that can reference other data sets, uh, which is certainly feasible. Cool. I think we zipped through most of the um, agenda, CLI video, uh, the CLI stuff, integrations, pushing and pulling from desktop. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if there's not any further questions, um, I think, you know, I, I would encourage folks um, to download Query Desktop and kick the tires a little bit. Uh, take a look at Query Cloud um, and, you know, you can follow data sets that you're interested in and get emails when they get updated. Uh, if you also just, like I showed, go to this uh, recently updated, uh, recently published uh, thing, you may see, you know, what a lot of people are pushing. So a bunch of these are query people. Um, and this is like a bot that I set up uh, that's like this one's actually pulling data from an Airtable um, every five minutes and it's pushing it to query. So you know, automations are possible if you can do a little coding uh, or if you have some infrastructure. Um, but like this one, we don't know who this, I don't know who this person is. This is somebody who, you know, learned about query recently and, and published some data um, uh, yesterday, actually. So um, come back and take a look. And, um, you know, I think Discord's also an option. Um, so if you're, if you, if you get stuck on anything, we have a, an active Discord channel and somebody's always willing to help uh, if you get stuck with any of the, any of the tools. Um, and then, you know, we'd love, you know, we'd love for uh, folks to be pushing data sets that are, you know, relevant and personal uh, for whatever they're working on. Um, and just think of it as, you know, think of it as your own private open data portal. Um, I can even click on, for example, actually, if I just go to Chris Wong um, up here, you'll see, you know, this is this is another route that you can go to on Query Cloud that actually just has all of the data sets that you've pushed. So um, you can start building out your profile, and if you have data sets that are relevant to your subject matter uh, or your area of expertise that you want to, you know, curate and make sure are in good, clean working order for the rest of the world to use, um, you know, this can be a great way to catalog them. Um, so thanks everyone for listening. I think it's been awesome to go through these tools with you today. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, if you don't mind unsharing your screen, I'll just share the last slide I've got, which is um, just sort of a way to start to stay in touch with our project um, and um, make sure that you're kind of aware of, of everything that we're about. So um, I think by now you know that our home is query.io. Uh, we're also as an open source project. Almost all of our code is uh, available for you to take a look at and fork at query the dash io. Um, We've set up a Discord channel, and this uh, should be a link to permanent invite to join. Um, this is kind of like our community building and customer service and um, support uh, channel network sort of thing. So I encourage you to join us there. You can always email us. Um, and um, we also publish a lot of data stories uh, or interesting data projects that leverage query or are, or are published onto query cloud through our blog posts uh, at medium which is linked there as well and i think you know as a project for the next few weeks and months um, we're always looking for help um, basically kicking the tires on query um, trying to do some of the things we've shown you today and if bugs pop up or you uh, got ideas about how a flow should work in particular, there was interest in the chat today about um, diffing. And so since I said that was an area of kind of active research, um, we'd love to sort of connect with you and learn more about what you'd want to see there. Um, other than that, there's no shortage of ways to sort of stay up on what we're doing. So I hope you guys will do that. Um, in the meantime, uh, 
thank you guys very much for blocking off part of your day to um, join the webinar. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Bye. Take care, everybody.